Gundabad was king of the Burgundians, succeeding his father Gundiok of Burgundy. Previous to this, he had been a patrician of the Western Roman Empire in 472 to 473, succeeding his uncle Rissima. Early life Gundabad seized the title of patrician when his uncle Rissima, who had been the power behind the throne for the Western Empire, died on 18 August 472. According to John of Antioch, Gundabad had previously executed the deposed emperor Anthemius on his uncle's orders. Once in power, Gundabad elevated the current count of the domestics, Glycerius, to the position of Western Roman Emperor. However, not long after Gundabad left for Burgundy where his father, Gundioke, had died, the exact date is unclear, with authorities stating it was in either 473 or 474. Once in Burgundy, his three brothers have been assumed to challenge to his rule, Godagisel, Chilprick II and Gundamar. Ian Wood speculates that Gundobad's departure may have been connected with the arrival of a new emperor. Julius Nepus, who had the support of the Roman Emperor in Constantinople. Once Julius Nepus landed in Portus, he deposed Glycerius, whom he made Bishop of Salona, reign. The events of the first decades of Gundobad's reign are not well known. Our only source is Gregory of Tours, who wrote almost a century later. According to Gregory, Gundobad set about ridding himself of his brothers. First slain was Gundamar, though little is known of this encounter. Next killed was Chilperic. According to Gregory, Gundabad had his wife drowned by tying a stone round her neck and Chilperic's two daughters driven into exile. The older daughter, Chroma became a nun. The other, Clotilde, had been seen by envoys of Clovis I, king of the Franks, who told their master of her beauty and intelligence. Clovis then asked Gundabad for Clotilde's hand in marriage. Gundabad was said to have been afraid to deny him. However, a letter written by Avatus, Bishop of Yen, consoling Gundabad on the death of an unnamed daughter, gives details that suggest there was more to the story. According to the explication of Danata Shanza and Ian Wood of Avatus a notoriously difficult Latin, the bishop writes, in the past, with an effable tender-heartedness, you mourned the deaths of your brothers. Further, Avatus alludes to Gundobad's intent to marry his deceased daughter to a foreign ruler, whom they suggest was Clovis. Indeed, they write, Clovis is really the only likely candidate as a prospective son-in-law for Gundobad shortly after 501, if their reading is correct. Then it is likely that Clotilde was offered to Clovis as a replacement, as an act of diplomacy not subservience. At this point occurs the earliest firm date in Gundobad's reign. In the early months of 490, while Odovisa and Theodoric the Great were locked in battle over control of Pavia, the Burgundians seized the opportunity to invade northwestern Italy. They devastated Liguria and carried away an unknown number of victims into captivity, if not slavery. Once Theodoric had killed Odovisa and was securely in control of Italy, he sent Bishop Epiphanius of Pavia on a mission to ransom as many of these captives as possible. Accompanied by Bishop Victor of Turin, they crossed the Alps in March. Shanza and would believe Epiphanius was possibly also entrusted with a mission in connection with the marriage of Gundobad's son Sigismund to Theodoric's daughter Ostrogotha. In his account of this visit, Magnus Felix and Odius, who accompanied Epiphanius on this journey, describes Godagisel as Germanus Regis, the king's brother, and not king, again contradicting Gregory of Tours' later account. Anodius notes that more than 6,000 souls were so ransomed, from lions alone 400 men were thus freed. Gregory of Tours states the battle with his third brother, Godagisel, raged long. Unaware of the other's actions, each called upon Clovis trying to persuade him to join forces against the other. Clovis sided with Godagisel, who had offered him his pleasure of tribute. Wood observes archly that Clovis' wife, Clotilde, 
whose father had been killed by Gundabad, was not likely to encourage good relations between the Franks and the Burgundians. Together they crushed Gundobad's force. Gundabad fled but King Clovis pursued him to Avignon. Gundabad feared the worst with Clovis's army at the gates. But Iridius went from Gundabad to Clovis and convinced him to spare Gundabad in return for a yearly tribute. The chronicler Marius of Aventures dates this conflict to 500. Gundabad later broke his promise of tribute as he regained his power and besieged Godegisel, locked up in the city of Vienne. As famine devoured Vienne, Godegisel expelled the common people from the city for fear for himself. An outraged expelled artisan seeking vengeance on Godegisel went to Gundabad, and with his help he navigated the aqueduct and broke into the city. Gundabad murdered Godegisel in 501 in an Arian church along with the bishop. The next event about which information has survived is Gundobad's role concerning the Battle of Voila. He was one of several rulers to whom King Theodoric sent letters urging peace and asking for mediation between Alaric II and Clovis. Despite Theodoric's best efforts, the two kings met at Voile, and Alaric was slain, according to Isidore of Seville. Gundabad supported Clovis in this battle. Isidore also provides a hint that Gundabad exploited the Visigothic defeat by plundering Narbonne. Delayed by the threat of the Byzantine navy, which had been hovering off the Italian shore around the time of the battle, the Ostrogothic army arrived to relieve the Burgundian siege of Arles. According to Herwig Wolfram, the Burgundians were the real victims of the Ostrogothic counter-offensive following the defeat of their cousins at Voile. Not only had they lost all their conquered territories in hope of acquiring Arles and Avignon but all their territory as far as Orange had been devastated following the death of King Clovis of the Franks in 511. The Burgundians became the most prestigious people in Gaul. He was favoured by the court of Constantinople, who awarded him the title of Magister Militum. Gundabad died peacefully, succeeded by his son Sigismund in 516. He also had another son, Godemar, who would succeed his brother after his death in 524. Learning in some of the manuscripts of the Lex Burgundianum, Gundabad named as publishing this code of law on the 29th of March of the second year of his reign. However, there are a number of inconsistencies in this description, and L. R. de Salis proposed a restored version of this passage which does not include a date, which would better fit the reign of his son, Sigismund. Although she accepts the strong likelihood that the Lex Burgundianum as we have it was the product of Sigismund's reign, Catherine Fisher Drew still argues that a core of this law code is the product of Gundabad or his chancellery. The letters of Bishop Avatus and Cassiodorus provide glimpses of Gundobad's intellectual side. Avatus, a Catholic bishop, answers questions posed by an Arian Christian about religion in several letters, showing a great religious tolerance, and may be the reason Gregory of Tours later thought he had secretly converted to Catholicism. Cassiodorus of Verrier includes a group of letters which discuss obtaining and sending a timepiece to Gundabad as a diplomatic present.